questions. Are you prepared to apologize for that tweet? Absolutely not. Uh, what I did was recognize that uh, individuals took it upon themselves to move material that was blocking a railway. And uh, this was not a counter-protest, this was not uh, anything other than people doing something that I, I think was actually a responsible thing to do. So uh, people can characterize it another way, they can torque the story and try to misrepresent it, but that's what I thought it was. Do you feel, I mean, uh, certainly a lot of Indigenous leaders feel, or the Indigenous leaders outside here today feel, um, that this did not uh, get your relationship with them off to a good start. They're saying if you become the leader of this party, you will need to have a much better working relationship if you want to work together on the economy. What's your response to that? I've always had a great working relationship with Indigenous leaders. Uh, going back to my time as a member of Parliament in Nova Scotia, I had two First Nations uh, in Central Nova, worked very collaboratively and positively with them. I've met with First, Leaders, First Nations leaders since I've been on this campaign, which is now in its fifth week, and I look forward to continuing a very positive relationship. Have you Peter, the, the, the race for the, for the leaderships appears to be like who can pivot further to the right. Is, is that how you see it, and how does that uh, work with the rest of Canada other than Alberta and Saskatchewan? Certainly not. I, uh, my, my campaign is positive. It's about ideas. It's about policy. It's about solutions. And uh, I want to talk about how we get the country working again. I want to talk about uh, the opportunities that are being missed, uh, particularly in our natural resource sector. I want to talk about Canada being a competitive place for investment, for innovation. I just met a, a young woman here who is doing an incredible online business uh, here in the north, which is exactly what we want to see is, is young people people engaged and involved in the economy and, and capitalizing on the promise that is Canada. What would you like to say to uh, those who are rallying outside? Well, I, I would like them to express themselves. If that's what they're here to do, then that's what they're welcome to do. Those are the freedoms that we have in this country. But impeding people's access to important goods like propane and medicine and food and blocking other people's ability to get to work and to travel and to uh, carry out their livelihoods, that's not part of what I consider to be a peaceful expression and, and that's why the police are being called upon to do their job. And would you encourage, I guess, if you were Prime Minister, would you be encouraging, like, I guess, how would you have handled this situation? Well, I would handle it exactly as I've said. I would encourage the police to do their job. And uh, in fact, I met with police today and uh, we had a conversation uh, along those lines. And, and I think that now we are even seeing, even seeing, now I'm almost three weeks into this, uh, the Prime Minister of Canada expressing the same. It's a little late, but uh, I'm glad to see that he's finally taking that position and come back to Canada after over a week outside the country when these protests began. Are you meeting with local Indigenous leaders while you're here? I did today, yes. Who did you meet with? Well, I'm not going to say, uh, because it was in private. And uh, in fact, we reached out to some of the leaders who were here and, and offered to meet with them prior to coming here and, and they were not able or, or were unavailable. Okay.